I lay there, in the sterile confinement of that wretched place, a mere shell of the being I once was. My limbs, once pulsating with vitality, now lay still and lifeless. Every fiber of my being throbbed with pain, a symphony of agony that resonated through my alien form. I stared blankly at the only source of illumination in that dark, oppressive room, a feeble bulb that flickered, casting shadows that danced in mockery. The air was thick with the acrid scent of antiseptic and despair, a scent that had become synonymous with my captivity. My body adorned in the remnants of the protective suit that once shielded me from the harshness of space served as a testament to the cruelty I had endured. It was one of the best advancements of my people, a suit that helped you cope in all sorts of weather and environments. It was meant to make lives easier. I didn't know I would be using it to survive. Cold, unyielding metal restraints bound me to that room. At least I could move around. I felt the chaos of their experiments reverberating with me, a relentless assault on my very essence. They had sought to unravel the mysteries of my alien physiology, to extract as if tearing pages from a manuscript. The pain was a constant companion, an unwelcome symphony that accompanied my every breath. The dim bulb above me cast shadows that danced across the cold, metallic walls. It flickered much like the flicker of hope that still persisted within me. I reflected on the unwitting contributions I had made to a world that now reveled in the fruits of my suffering. My technology, my knowledge, all turned against me in the name of human progress. My consciousness floated in the ethereal space between wakefulness and the relentless abyss of exhaustion. Each passing moment felt like an eternity. In their twisted ingenuity, they had discovered a frequency that resonated with the very essence of my alien physiology. This time, they had used a cacophony of 3000 Hz to see if I lived through it. For them, it was the dulcet resonance of an opera singer's voice. But for me, it was a relentless siege, an unending assault on the core of my being. And it fascinated them. I could tell from the looks on their faces that I could watch through the glass window. Fuck you. I had been awake for 278 hours. Among my other features the humans had discovered, it was that I could stay awake for 10 days in human time, but they were curious to push it. What happened if he stays awake for longer? They exploited this knowledge sadistically, subjecting me to auditory and visual torment that transcended the limits of human comprehension. I mustered the strength to focus on the dim bulb, my silent companion in this chamber of suffering. It flickered like the dying embers of hope within me. I want to sleep. My mind begged me. My body had already given up. For just one minute. Just one minute. I whispered to the dim bulb, my plea a feeble attempt to negotiate with the silent sentinel that oversaw my suffering. With a labored breath, I closed my eyes. I was falling asleep. A fleeting sense of relief teased my senses. Just as I felt my body light and my mind drifting off, a symphony of cruelty erupted. The room roared with the same infernal frequency and a blinding array of lights, brighter and more piercing than anything I'd endured before, flickered on and off. The darkness I sought was banished, replaced by an onslaught of sensory assault. My eyes snapped open and the world exploded into a kaleidoscope of searing brightness. I convulsed with an indescribable agony. The dim bulb, once a flickering companion, was lost in the overwhelming blaze of luminescence. I just wanted a moment of peace, I screamed, my voice echoing through the metallic confines of the chamber. I don't know how long I was screaming out in pain. I only stopped when there was nothing coming out of my throat. No voice, because I had used everything in me. In the aftermath of my unintended arrival on Earth, I found myself in the remnants of my once proud starship. It wasn't the smoothest of landings, and there are several reasons for that. Anyhow, I didn't recognize where I was, but I knew it was the wrong place because I had landed too early. With a touch, the console sprang to life. Where am I? I queried, my alien tongue resonating through the console. The AI 
a sentient amalgamation of data and consciousness, responded with a pulsating hum. You are on Earth in the region known as Wales. It intoned in a melodic cadence. Coordinates 52.88475 minus 3.37928. Earth, a name echoing through the cosmos, but unknown to my extraterrestrial heritage. Seeking more clarity, I pressed further. What is this place, and how far is it from my home? The console AI, its responses measured and precise, conveyed information that defied the loss of temporal comprehension. Earth is a terrestrial planet within the Milky Way galaxy, situated approximately 621 light years from your designated origin. A profound silence enveloped me as I processed the inconceivable revelation. My home planet, a distant beacon in the cosmos, was now a temporal chasm away. 621 light years? I murmured, a disconcerting realization settling upon me. What a small planet. Indeed. Would you like me to install Earth languages into you? The AI offered. Yes, I think that would be great, because it'll take me a while to get my ship back up and running. The console AI, a silent witness to the cosmic ballet, became my guide through the intricate dance of space-time manipulation. English, huh? It sounds funny. With a sense of profound curiosity, I turned my attention back to the console AI seeking to unravel the mysteries of the temporal anomaly in which I found myself entangled. How old is the civilization that populates this earth? I inquired. The console AI, a repository of cosmic knowledge, responded with an almost dispassionate hum. The earth has witnessed the rise of a sentient species known as humans. The current stage of their civilization is dated at approximately 20th century earth time. However, the emergence of human civilization spans back thousands of Earth years, characterized by a journey from primitive societies to the complexities of their current state. Primitive societies? I echoed, a tinge of incredulity in my voice. The console AI continued its dispassionate narrative, projecting holographic images of humanity's humble beginnings. They are still primitive compared to the other civilizations in space, all of which are far ahead with their advancements and technology. The humans lived in small communities, relying on rudimentary tools and forging a symbiotic relationship with the Earth's bounty. The evolution of their cognitive capacities gradually paved the way for the development of complex social structures, agricultural practices, and the eventual emergence of advanced civilizations. Despite their progress, humans remain in the nascent stages of cosmic understanding their technological advancements barely scratching the surface of the universe's vast complexities. What about right now? What's happening on Earth? I do not have sufficient information, but the surrounding area has been affected by a fungus that destroys elm trees. How long before my ship has fuel for the right back? I asked the AI. Our ships were designed to harvest hydrogen from anywhere we were and convert it into fuel. It was very easy and convenient because it meant no matter where we were, we could always return home. The only downside was that it took a bit of time depending on the environment of the planet. 56 days in human time. Interesting. I might as well help out while I'm waiting for the ship to recover the fuel. In the subterranean confines of the Berwyn Mountains, I immerse myself in the study of the insidious fungus that wrought havoc upon Earth's elms, Dutch elm disease. I found a cave and used my stuff from the ship to transform it into my clandestine laboratory. The fungus, a microscopic adversary responsible for the demise of majestic elms, became the focal point of my research. My advanced medical knowledge, gleaned from years of serving as a medical officer on my home planet, intersected with the primitive understanding of Earth's scientific community. With each passing day, I meticulously analyzed the genetic makeup of the fungus, deciphering its intricate code that orchestrated devastation. As my research progressed, I identified key vulnerabilities within the fungus's structure. Drawing upon the celestial pharmacopoeia ingrained in my medical expertise, I synthesized a compound designed to separate the fungus's life cycle from the elm trees. The breakthrough came in the form of a cosmic antidote, a solution capable of arresting the progress of Dutch elm disease. The elixir, 
a testament to the convergence of alien insight and earthly perseverance, held the promise of salvation for the imperiled elms. With the invisible spaceship standing sentinel outside the cave, I embarked on a nocturnal journey across the affected landscapes. Armed with the antidote, I administered the cosmic remedy to the ailing elms, infusing the ancient trees with the essence of healing. The celestial concoction, born from the fusion of worlds, coursed through the vascular systems of the elms, waging a silent war against the invasive fungus. My people didn't believe in killing other species as a solution. For centuries, we have been successfully diverting all life forms that hurt us to something milder, something that fulfilled their requirements but left us alone. As the seasons unfolded, the elms, once on the brink of demise, began to exhibit signs of renewal. The leaves, once tainted by the spectral hues of disease, regained their verdant vibrancy. The air in the Berwyn Mountains, once heavy with the burden of ecological loss, now resonated with the whispers of healing. Emboldened by the success of my efforts against Dutch elm disease, I turned my attention to fortifying my clandestine laboratory within the Berwyn Mountains and creating a companion, a transcendent AI assistant that would transcend the limitations of Earth's technological prowess. Drawing upon the wealth of my interstellar knowledge, I fashioned an AI entity that eclipsed the capabilities of any earthly counterpart. The AI, unlike anything Earth had encountered, operated as an omnipotent presence within the cave. It responded to my voice, deciphering the complexities of my alien language and adapting to the nuances of terrestrial communication. This AI companion, a counterpart to the primitive voice-activated technologies of 1974 Earth, surpassed the boundaries of contemporary understanding. I made sure the AI could never initiate any hostile action during the installation and development. Friend, I intoned, my alien language resonating through the cavern. The AI, a luminous manifestation of cosmic intelligence, hummed to life. Analyze the ecological impact of the antidote on the elms, monitor the fungal regression, and assess the symbiotic restoration of the forest. In response, the AI projected holographic displays depicting real-time data on the elm's resurgence. It assimilated vast pools of information, weaving intricate narratives of ecological recovery. The cave, once a refuge for cosmic research, transformed into a hub where the past and future coexisted in a symphony of environmental reclamation. Beyond its scientific acumen, the AI became the orchestrator of my laboratory. It regulated the invisible spaceship's cloaking mechanisms, ensuring our concealment within the Berwyn Mountains. Friend, initiate the atmospheric purifiers. I commanded, and the AI seamlessly engaged the advanced environmental systems that maintained the delicate balance within the cave. This time, the purpose was far more intricate. I endeavored to harness the latent energies within the mountain to conduct an experiment in temporal resonance. The cave, with its unique geological composition, served as an ideal testing ground. My goal was to synchronize the pulsations of the mountain with the rhythms of the cosmos, unlocking temporal frequencies that bridged the gap between the present and the veiled tapestries of time. Maybe I could find a quicker way of going back home. As the pulsations reverberated through the subterranean passages, they inadvertently emanated beyond the confines of the Berwyn Mountains. Unbeknownst to me, Humans on the outskirts detected these anomalous signals. Scientists and amateur astronomers alike were captivated by the unexplained pulses that permeated their instruments. News of the mysterious signals reached far and wide, captivating the imagination of both the scientific community and the general public. Conspiracy theories proliferated, blending tales of extraterrestrial communication with earthly folklore. Telescopes turned towards the Berwyn Mountains, seeking to unravel the enigma encapsulated within the pulses that had breached the cosmic veil. I, consumed by my temporal experiment, remained oblivious to the terrestrial stir my actions had caused. The cave, now a confluence of cosmic research and temporal exploration, became an inadvertent beacon in the vast tapestry of the unknown. In the dead of night, the silence of the mountains was shattered by the cacophony of military machinery. Soldiers, 
armed with earthly weapons and driven by the fear of the unknown, surrounded the concealed entrance to the cave. The invisible spaceship, normally a sentinel in silent repose, now faced the imminent threat of discovery. As I delved into the intricacies of temporal resonance within the cave, oblivious to the approaching threat, the military executed a coordinated ambush with full force. The entrance to the cave, my refuge and laboratory, echoed with several blasts, and I saw smoke followed by an ominous clatter of boots and the mechanical hum of machines. Before I could react, the military descended upon the cave with a relentless determination. Armed forces, faces obscured by tactical gear, seized the moment to confront the extraterrestrial enigma within their midst. The temporal experiment, interrupted in its delicate dance, cast shadows of uncertainty across the walls of the cave. As the military surrounded the cave entrance, floodlights piercing the darkness and weapons strained in my direction, a commanding voice broke through the tense silence. Identify yourself! In the stark illumination, I emerged from the depths of the cave, my alien form exposed to the scrutiny of earthly eyes. The soldiers, faces obscured by tactical gear, awaited my response with a mixture of apprehension and readiness. With a measured calmness, I spoke in English. I am Zarnak, a voyager from the distant star system of Zillion Prime. The soldiers exchanged wary glances, uncertain of how to interpret the extraterrestrial encounter. The commanding officer, undeterred, pressed for further clarification. Zarnak, what is your purpose here? What are you doing in this cave? I am a medical officer from Zillion Prime. I explained, the weight of cosmic knowledge evident in my voice. I sought refuge on Earth after a navigational malfunction led to my unintended arrival. My presence here is one of scientific exploration and, until this moment, peaceful coexistence. The soldiers, caught between the unknown and the perceived threat, maintained their vigilant stance. I saw one of the men point a gun at me, but it looked funny. I was stupid to be distracted, trying to understand what it was when several electric meshes came out of it and wrapped me. Huh? I could see electricity flowing through it, but what were they trying to achieve? What the f- Go up, increase the voltage right now. Before I could turn around or react, electric shocks coursed through my body, bringing me down to my knees. My entire body shook, and it was a pain I hadn't experienced before. I lost consciousness soon after. I am damn sure they shot me again with a higher voltage. The military convoy, a procession of armored vehicles, wound its way through the night shrouded landscape. The invisible spaceship, now in tow and stripped of its extraterrestrial cloak, added an otherworldly dimension to the terrestrial caravan. As we approached the facility, the imposing structure rose like a monolith, a manifestation of Earth's readiness to contain the unknown. I, Zarnak, found myself escorted from the Berwyn Mountains to what the humans euphemistically referred to as a facility, but it was no more than a prison for me. Area 51, that's what they called it. Area 51 sprawled across the desolate landscape like a cosmic secret embedded in the Nevada desert based on the knowledge I had gathered about Earth in my short time. Its perimeter was shrouded in secrecy with towering fences crowned by spirals of razor wire, standing as vigilant sentinels against prying eyes. Guard towers loomed at strategic intervals, their watchful gaze scanning the vast expanse that concealed the facility's hidden depths. The entrance, an unassuming gateway, belied the labyrinthine complexities that awaited within. As the gates swung open, revealing the muted hues of the Nevada desert, they also unveiled the threshold to a realm where cosmic mysteries and human curiosity converged. Inside, the facility's architecture mirrored the enigma it housed. Bunkered structures, seemingly indistinguishable from the arid surroundings, housed laboratories veiled in the shadows of classified research. Underground passages, cloaked in secrecy, burrowed beneath the surface, a subterranean realm where the extraterrestrial and terrestrial intersected. High-tech surveillance systems, their lenses trained on every inch of the compound, surveyed the alien presence with an unrelenting gaze. The aura of containment hung in the air, as if the very walls themselves held the whispered secrets of otherworldly encounters. The cells, 
stark and sterile, echoed with the weight of cosmic solitude. Steel doors, sealed with an air of finality, separated the extraterrestrial captive from the outside world. Yet, even within the confines of Area 51, the invisible threats of my cosmic identity resisted the attempts at complete terrestrial containment. Time unfolded with a leaden weight, each day blending into the next in a monotonous procession of captivity. In the early days, an ET specialist clad in a protective suit that seemed more like an earthly interpretation of extraterrestrial contact approached my cell. As the specialist stood on the other side of the transparent barrier, their voice muffled by the suit, they asked the perennial question, Who are you? In response, I spoke in English, the language of Earth, aiming to bridge the linguistic gap that had often been a source of misunderstanding. Yet, the attempt at communication became a catalyst for further suspicion. Accusations of attempting to manipulate human minds echoed through the sterile corridors of the facility. They treated me worse after that, a prisoner accused of wielding a power I didn't possess. The temporal experiment, the dismantling of my spaceship, the dissection of my instruments, all were components of a grand narrative concocted by earthly authorities, fueled by a fear that labeled me as a threat. The tortures began, each session an exploration of the limits of an extraterrestrial physiology subjected to earthly torment. The agony transcended the physical, seeping into the recesses of my psyche. They probed, dissected, and tested, their curiosity driven by the relentless pursuit of understanding. Interrogation followed, a predictable pattern, with the same question looming like a specter. Why are you here? My answers, steeped in the truth of cosmic happenstance, fell on deaf ears. The dichotomy between my intent and their perception grew wider, an ever-expanding chasm fueled by mistrust and the haunting echoes of humanity's fears. As the years passed, the facility became a testament to Earth's attempts to dissect the unknown. Area 51, synonymous with the mysteries that lingered beyond the reach of public knowledge, housed an extraterrestrial captive whose resilience echoed through the sterile corridors, a reminder that, even in captivity, the cosmic essence defied the limitations imposed by terrestrial confines. Advanced weaponry, autopilot, DNA profiling, AI, everything that I had brought back to Earth, they had claimed it as their invention and genius. How pathetic. You humans have taken everything from me. The remnants of my cosmic sanctuary, the instruments of my exploration, and the very essence of my extraterrestrial existence. This was it. I was past my breaking point. I was past the point I gave a fuck about my vows and pledges to not hurt life, to help others, to be a cosmic friend. It is time for you, dim-witted assholes, to understand that there are consequences. I stopped putting in an effort to struggle and fight against the torture and brutal treatment. It helped me save my strength a lot more than I had previously thought. Had I known about it before, I wouldn't have bothered too much. I had been in the facility for years. With nothing better to do, I knew the routine. My ears and eyes were privy to the guard rotations, breaks, torture period, and the routine interrogation. Of course, there were cameras everywhere in the facility, but that didn't bother me. I wanted them to watch what I was about to do. I meticulously planned my escape, biding my time in the cold silence of the cell, awaiting the daily ritual of interrogation. As the door creaked open, heralding the arrival of the relentless Inquisitor, I could sense the routine unfolding once more. The ET specialist, an unwitting pawn in my impending rebellion, entered with the same air of confident ignorance. I initiated the conversation this time. Ah, the seeker of extraterrestrial truths graces me with his presence again. Do you enjoy our little chats, specialist? Or do you just revel in the sound of your own futile questions? I could tell it caught the person off guard, but this was just the start. I'm calling him an idiot from now on in my story because special is my ass. The idiot scoffed. Save your banter, alien. You're not getting under my skin. I was honest with him. I'm 
I'm bored of your questions. I don't get why you ask the same questions every day. But then again, if I think about it, you humans are very, very stupid. I can't imagine being one. As the specialist leaned in, arrogance emanating like a palpable aura, I seized the opportunity. With a sudden burst of agility, I launched at him, catching him off guard, my chains rattling as I extended and used them to my advantage. I wrangled his neck by layering the chain over it and then pulling it to tighten the grip. The idiot tried to yell, but I reached into his pockets, hoping to find the metal key to my freedom. And I did. Using the key, I freed myself. That was the last sound the idiot ever made. The struggle had gotten the attention of the two routine guards outside. One of the guards shouted, What the hell is happening in there? The second guard dialed in through the radio. We may have a breach in the ET containment area. Move in. As soon as they stepped into the room, they started shooting. But I was quicker. In the blink of an eye, I used the idiot's body as an unwitting shield. The idiot now a sacrificial barrier between the guards and me. The bullets meant for me found their mark in their comrade, his body collapsing in a gruesome display. You should have thought twice before aiming those at me, I said. In a swift and calculated retaliation, I disarmed the disorientated guard, using his own weapon against them. The element of surprise worked in my favor as I swiftly neutralized the remaining threat. The other guard was visibly shaking. He pleaded, Please, don't! Your kind has shown me no mercy. The room fell silent as I fired a few bullets towards the other guard. I scavenged their weapons, the tools of their aggression now in the hands of the one they sought to subjugate. The path to freedom lay ahead, and I, Zarnak, an alien scorned, moved through the sterile corridors of Area 51 with purpose. The escape from this earthly prison had begun, and the echoes of defiance reverberated in every step I took. Alarms started to blare in the building, but it only fueled me. I had no interactions with humans before openly, so I only just then found out that I could move a lot faster than those dim wits. As I reached the perimeter fence, the invisible spaceship, stripped of its extraterrestrial cloak, awaited its moment of liberation. At least they couldn't understand how to disassemble my ship without destroying it. Gotta give them points for that. As soon as I stepped into my spaceship, a very familiar voice warmed my heart. Welcome back. We are ready to launch. Thank you, friend. I pressed a few buttons on my console, and before long, I was already in space, making my way away from Earth. You must be wondering why I didn't plan my escape earlier. I honestly wonder about that too. It makes me mad that I didn't. But the only rational explanation is that I became stupid living with fucking dumb people. Or maybe it was because I hadn't reached my breaking point yet. Or perhaps I still held hope that you would let me go and apologize. But no, you are like parasites. You do not belong in this universe. I am not used to violence or profanity, but I'm learning it more because it serves as a conduit for my emotions. So fuck you. Let me remind you of my vow to make you realize your actions have consequences. Let me leave one act of kindness to you humans. I am not going back home. I am not staying on earth. But I am designing a beacon that will land in the middle of the earth and beckon my people to come armed with our weapons and give you just a little taste of what you did to me all these years. Having spent some years with the best of your kind, I am so damn confident that there is absolutely nothing you can make that will protect you from my wrath. Better spend as much time as you can with your loved ones.